Good morning. We are ready to start Obadiah today. Let's open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with a simple request. Enlightenment for the entire world. Bring about a new revolution. One of the army of Christ. We ask, Lord, that you help us be able to move those to learn about you, to bring them to salvation. Lord, we pray that this message reaches those who need to hear it. We also ask for discernment in learning what your words have for us today. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Voice is a little hoarse today. Surely it wasn't all that turkey. Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah. This is what the Sovereign Lord says about Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nations to say, Rise and let us go against her for battle. See? I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights, you who say to yourself, Who can bring me down to the ground? Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. If thieves come to you, if robbers in the night, oh, what a disaster awaits you. Would they not steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers came to you, would they not leave a few grapes? But how Esau will be ransacked, his hidden treasures pillaged. All your allies will force you to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. In that day, declares the Lord, will I not destroy the wise men of Edom, men of understanding in the mountains of Esau? Your warriors, O Taman, will be terrified, and everyone in Esau's mountains will be cut down in the slaughter. Because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you'll be, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On the day you stood aloof, while strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. You should not look down on your brother in the day of his misfortune nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. You should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster, nor look down on them in their calamity in the day of their disaster, nor seize their wealth in the day of their disaster. You should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives, nor hand over their survivors in the day of their trouble. The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance, it will be holy, and the house of Jacob will possess its inheritance. <laughs> the house of Jacob will be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. The house of Esau will be stubble, and they will set it on fire and consume it. There will be no survivors from the house of Esau. The Lord has spoken. People from the Negev will occupy the mountains of Esau, and people from the foothills will possess the land 
of the Philistines. They will occupy the fields of Ephraim and Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead. This company of Israelite exiles who are in Canaan will possess the land as far as Zarephath. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Sepharad will possess the towns of the Negev. Deliverers will, deliverers will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom will be the Lord's. <clears throat> Jonah Jonah flees from the Lord. <coughs> the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amatai. Amatai? Amatai? Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found the ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the she sea ship that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe you will take notice of us and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? <clears throat> he answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord, because he had already told them so. The sea is getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, O Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Jonah's Prayer From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head, 
To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh my Lord, O oh Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with the song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What have I vowed I will make good? Salvation comes from the Lord. <coughs> and the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah out onto dry land. Jonah goes to Nivea. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it, the message I gave you. Oh, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nivea. Now Nivea was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, Forty more days and Nivea will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nivea, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nivea. Ninia. Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered up with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. Jonah's anger at the Lord's compassion but Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, this is, not, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sin and calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down in the, at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort, and Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day God provided a worm, which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better off for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh, has more than a hundred and twenty thousand people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, 
and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? Micah The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Morseth during the reign of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah kings of Judah. The vision he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, O peoples, all of you, listen, O earth and all who are in it, that the Sovereign Lord may witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple, judgment against Samaria and Jerusalem. Look, the Lord is coming from his dwelling place. He comes down and treads the high places of the earth. The mountains melt beneath him and the valleys split apart like wax before the fire, like water rushing down a slope. All this is because of Jacob's transgression, because of the sins of the house of Israel. What is Jacob's transgression? Is it not Samaria? What is Judah's high place? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria a heap of rubble, a place for planting vineyards. I will pour her stones into the valley and lay bare her foundations. All her idols will be broken to pieces. All her temple gifts will be burned with fire. I will destroy all her images. Since she gathered her gifts from the wages of prostitutes, as the wages of prostitutes, they will again be used. Weeping and Mourning Because of this I will weep and wail. I will go about barefoot and naked. I will howl like a jackal and moan like an owl. For a wound is incurable, it has come to Judah. It has reached the very gate of my people, even to Jerusalem itself. Tell it not in Goth, weep not at all. In Beth of Oprah, roll in the dust. Pass on in nakedness and shame, you who live in Shafir. Those who live in Zanon will not come out. Beth Azel is in mourning. Its protection is taken from you. Those who live in Marath writhe in pain waiting for relief, because disaster has come from the Lord, even to the gate of Jerusalem. You who live in Klakish, harness the team to be the chariot, to the chariot. You are the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in you. Therefore you will give parting gifts to Morseth Goth, the town of Ak Zib will prove deceptive to the kings of Israel. I will bring a conqueror against you who lives in Marish Marishah. He who is the glory of Israel will come to Adullam. Shave your heads in mourning for the children in whom you delight. Make yourselves as bald as the vulture, for they will go from you into exile. Man's plans, and God's. <clears throat> Woe to those who plan inequity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them. They defraud a man of his home, a fellow man of his inheritance. Therefore, the Lord says, I am planning disaster against this people, from which you cannot save yourselves. You will no longer walk proudly, for it will be a time of calamity. In that day, men will ridicule you. They will taunt you with this mournful song. We are utterly ruined. My people's possessions is divided up. He takes it from me. He assigns our fields to traitors. Therefore, you will have no one in the assembly of the Lord to divide the land.
by lot. False prophets. Do not prophesy, their prophets say. Do not prophesy about these things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Should it be said, O house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord angry? Does he do such things? Do not my words do good to him whose ways are upright? Lately my people have risen up like an enemy. You strip off the rich robe from those who pass by without a care, like men returning from battle. Let me get a golf drop. A little better. You drive the women of my people from their pleasant homes. You take away my blessings from their children forever. Get up and go away. For this is not your resting place, because it is defiled. It is ruin beyond all remedy. If a liar and deceiver comes and says... I will prophesy for you plenty of wine and beer. He will be just the prophet for this people. Deliverance promised. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will surely bring together the remnant of Israel. I will bring them together like sheep in a pen, like a flock in its pasture. The place will throng with people. One who breaks open the wall will go up before them. They will break through the gate and go out. Their king will pass through before them, the Lord at their head. Leaders and prophets rebuked. Then I said, Listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel. Should you not know justice, you who hate good and love evil? who tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin, and break their bones in pieces, who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot. Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time he will hide his face from there, because of the evil they have done. This is what the Lord says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, if one feeds them, they proclaim peace. If he does not, they prepare to wage war against him. Therefore night will come over you without visions, and darkness without divination. The sun will set for the prophets, and the day will go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed, and the diviners disgraced. They will all cover their faces, because there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression, to Israel his sin. <coughs> Hear this. Hear this, you leaders of the house of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion without bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell, pro tell fortunes for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill a mound, overgrown with thickets. <coughs> the mountain of the Lord in the last days the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the 
mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may, that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations, far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The Lord's Plan In that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame, I will assemble the exiles, and those I have brought to grief. I will make the lame a remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion, from that day and forever. As for you, O watch watchtower of the flock, O stronghold of the daughter of Zion, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Why do you now cry aloud? Have you no king? As your counselor perish, the pain seizes you, like that of a woman in labor. Writhe in agony, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in labor, for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon there you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you out of the hands of your enemy. Out of the hand of your enemies. But now many nations are gathered against you. They say, let her be defiled. Let our eyes gloat over Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not share his plan. He who gathers them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Rise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will give you horns of iron. I will give you hooves of bronze, and you will break to pieces many nations. You will devote their ill-gotten gains to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. A promised ruler from Bethlehem. Marshal your troops, O city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned till the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. Deliverance and Destruction When the Assyrian invades our land and marches through our fortresses, we will, raise, we will rise drays against him. Seven shepherds, even eight leaders of men. They will rule the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod with drawn sword. He will deliver us from the Assyrian when he invades our land and marches into our borders. 
The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples, like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for man or linger for mankind. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes and no one can rescue. Your hand will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies, and all your foes will be destroyed. In that day, declares the Lord, I will destroy your horses from among you, and demolish your chariots. I will destroy the cities of your land, and tear down all your strongholds. I will destroy your witchcraft, and you will no longer cast spells. I will destroy your carved images and your sacred stones from among you. You will no longer bow down to the work of your hands. I will uproot from among you your Asherah poles and demolish your cities. I will take vengeance and anger and wrath upon the nations that have not obeyed me. The Lord's case against Israel. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember when Balak, king of Moab, counseled and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. <clears throat> With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Israel's guilt and punishment. Listen, the Lord is calling to the city and to fear your name is wisdom. Heed the rod and the one who appointed it. Am I still to forget a wicked house? Your ill-gotten treasures and the sort he, short he faff, which is accursed? Shall I acquit a man with dishonest scales, with a bag of false weights? Her rich men are violent, her people are liars, and their tongues speak deceitfully. Therefore I have begun to destroy you, to ruin you because of your sins. You will eat, but not be satisfied. Your stomach will still be empty. You will store up, but save nothing, because what you save I will give to the sword. You will plant, but not harvest. You will press olives, but not use the oil on yourselves. You will crush grapes, but not drink the wine. You have observed the statues of Omri, and all the practices of Ahab's house, and you have followed their traditions. Therefore I will give you over to ruin, and your people to derision. You will bear the scorn of the nations. And we are going to stop there today. Everybody have a blessed day, and I will see you again tomorrow. And remember, a simple act of kindness can change someone's 
entire day.